Alright guys, so in this build video we are going to be showing you a step-by-step -step process of our 500 by 1000 millimeter work bee, which in standard form that's 19 and a half inches by 39 inches. This machine is the perfect design for rigid cuts, cutting aluminum, and hard materials. As you can see, this thing's like a little tank. I'm going to go over some of the specs now. So we have a Z travel at 122 millimeters or four and a half inches. So this is going to be from the bottom of our Z axis down to our table. We also have a workable depth of 86 millimeters or three inches, which is incredible. You can mill out a lot of stuff, guys. Definitely a lot of options for you here. And our cutting area for this machine is at 30 inches for our Y axis. And we also have 12 and a half inches for our X axis. This machine is awesome. Definitely uh, convenient as well because you have the length but it's narrow so you could definitely fit it on a standard table so let's go ahead and move along to our step-by-step -step build along video and let's get this thing built guys okay so on our first step here we are going to be assembling our extreme wheels we're gonna need two of our bearings one precision shim and our wheel casing so to start this process off we're gonna go ahead and insert one of our bearings a precision shim in the middle and our additional bearing on the other side should snap into place and that is one of our assembled wheels now let's go ahead and assemble our additional 47 wheels and we'll move on to our next step all right moving on to our next step here guys we are going to be assembling our nut blocks to our y-axis left plate here as you can see we are going to need our y-axis left plate four of our 25 millimeter screws four of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our precision shims, four of our nylon hex nuts, as well as two of our nut blocks and our M5 ball driver here. So the first thing that we're gonna notice is our hole spacing on the plate. The two end holes here aligned with our center hole for our motor shaft are going to be the ones that we're gonna attach our nut blocks to. So we're gonna start off with our 25 millimeter screws here and feed them through each hole. Go ahead and flip the plate over and this allows for us to keep our screws in place that way we have no movement while we're stacking our aluminum spacers and shims in place so next we're going to go ahead and grab our three millimeter aluminum spacers go ahead and stack them on top followed by our precision shims here all right now go ahead and grab one of your nut blocks as you can see the hex design here that is made to uh, fit our nylon hex nut in place so there's no need for a spanner wrench or anything else to adjust it this will actually do the work for you which is awesome so this other side this is where the recessed holes will go for our screws so when we mount this to our plate it's going to go just like this perfect do the same with your other nut block and we're going to go ahead and thread our nylon hex nut in place So let's go ahead and tilt this to the side. That way we can fasten it down with our ball driver. Let's go ahead and pull the nut block out slightly. That way the recessed holes will fit our nylon hex nuts, just like so, and begin to fasten it down. So go ahead and do that, guys. All right, now that we have those tight, we're gonna go ahead and back off the screw about one turn. And the reason for doing that is once we mount, mount this to our Y axis, we will fasten it once our lead screw is through the nut blocks. And this will allow for a flush mount without any backlash. So go ahead and back those off. So they should be a little bit loose, which is fine. And as you can see, we have our nut blocks in place. That's looking great, guys. Go ahead and put this off to the side and we will move on to our next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our wheels to our y-axis left plate that has our nut blocks attached to it as well as our inner plate will be mounted to the y-axis plate so in this step we are going to need our y-axis assembly with our nut blocks our y inner plate we need 14 precision shims six of our six millimeter eccentric spacers we're going to need eight of our six millimeter aluminum spacers we need seven of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers seven of our black nylon hex nuts seven of our 60 millimeter screws 14 of our assembled wheels, M5 ball driver, spanner wrench, and a permanent marker. So to get started here guys, we're going to go ahead and mark our eccentrics. Each one of these has a stamp that states 6 millimeters on the end here. We're going to go ahead and mark that with our permanent marker. And the reason for doing so is as we adjust our wheels, we will do so with our eccentric. So having this facing outward towards us makes the adjustment process way easier. So let's go ahead and mark all of those.
All right, perfect. Now that we have those marked, we can go ahead with the assembly process here. We're going to take a look at our Y-axis left plate first. As you can see, we have four holes on top here, which are going to be for our fixed wheels. So that'll be our aluminum spacer side. So these wheels won't be adjusted over time. The bottom three, as you can see, the holes here are slightly larger, and that's for movement of the eccentric spacer. So we'll be able to add preload to our rail. So we're going to go ahead and feed our 60 millimeter screws through each one of these holes. All right, and then we're just going to slowly turn the plate over like we did with the nut block process and just land this on top of our plate here. As you can see, all of our screws are in place. So now we can start our configuration for our dual wheels. So we're going to start off with the bottom portion here with our eccentric spacers. Make sure that the marked end is facing towards you away from our fixed wheels on top. So let's go ahead and feed three of those on top. All right, next we're going to add our precision shims on top of our eccentric spacers here. Following the precision shims are going to be our wheels. Now if you see that uh, your precision shim is off-centered in your wheel, that's no problem. You can adjust it either with your ball driver or you can spin it around the screw like so and let it find its center of gravity. Just like that. Honestly, I kind of prefer that way. It's a little bit easier. All right, so after the wheel, we're going to go ahead and put on our 9 millimeter aluminum spacer, and this will be our split between our dual wheel configuration. So go ahead and add your additional wheel. All right, so in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and add our precision shim on top of our second wheel, followed by our eccentric spacer. Now notice that the eccentric spacer since it's going to be locked into our Y inner plate, this lip here should be facing upward. So you're going to mount it like so. Once again, you want the black end that we marked facing you away from our fixed wheels. All right, very nice. Now we're done with the eccentric side. We're going to go ahead and move forward to our fixed wheel side. So we're going to grab a 6 millimeter aluminum spacer to start off with and go ahead and put that on your additional three 60 millimeter screws, followed by your precision shims. Next, go ahead and put your wheel on top and your 9mm aluminum spacer is next. And now you're going to go ahead and put your second wheel set on. Next will be your precision shims, followed by your 6mm aluminum spacer. So that's looking really good guys. We're going to go ahead and take our Y inner plate, make sure that your holes align, three with our eccentric side as well as four for our fixed side of the wheels, and go ahead and place that. Just kind of snap in place with the eccentrics going into our larger holes here on the bottom. That looks really good. We're going to go ahead and take our black nylon hex nuts here and thread them on top of our 60 millimeter screws. All right, perfect. Now that we have this threaded on top, I'm going to go ahead and slide our plate assembly to its side. Grabbing your spanner wrench here and your M5 ball driver, we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. All right, now that we have this tightened down, we have a solid Y-axis left plate here. And this assembly is looking really good, guys. I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side, and let's move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our nut blocks to our Y-axis right plate. We're going to need our Y-axis right plate, four of our nylon hex nuts, four of our 25 millimeter screws, four of our precision shims, four of our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our nut blocks, and our M5 ball driver. So starting off, just like our previous step on our Y-axis left plate, we are going to find our two holes here on each end of the plate aligned with our center hole for our motor shaft and go ahead and feed our 25 millimeter screws through these holes all right go ahead and rotate the plate around we're going to rest it on the front face that way we can assemble our nut blocks on the back end of the plate all right so go ahead and grab your three millimeter aluminum spacers and place them onto each screw and our precision shims and in addition to that, our nut blocks, noticing that our hex nut design here for our hex nut is going to be facing upward. Let's go ahead and mount it like so. Go ahead and thread our nylon hex nuts onto the screw. Go 
Alright, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and rotate the plate and fasten these down with our ball driver. Alright, so go ahead and back off a couple turns here. And like I said, this is essential. We don't want any backlash in our system, so make sure that we tighten these down after our lead screws through our blocks. All right, perfect, guys. So that is our nut block assembly for our right Y axis plate. Let's go ahead and put that to the side, and we're going to move on to the next step here, guys. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We're going to be doing our wheel assembly for our Y axis right plate. So as you can see here, we're going to have our nut block assembly attached to our Y axis right plate and our uh, inner plate here. We're also going to need six of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, 14 precision shims, seven of our black nylon hex nuts, eight of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, seven of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, 14 of our assembled wheels, seven of our 60 millimeter screws, an M5 ball driver here, spanner wrench, and our permanent marker. So we're going to start off by marking our eccentrics. We want to find our six millimeter insignia that is pressed into our eccentric spacer so go ahead and mark that and we're going to do the same thing to our additional eccentric spacer so go ahead and do that all right perfect now that we have those marked we're going to go ahead and take a look at our y-axis right plate here as you can see our four top holes here are smaller than our three bottom. Our eccentric spacers are going to be in the larger holes here on the bottom. The purpose of that is to add preload to the wheel. We're going to be able to rotate that eccentric in this larger hole space. So let's go ahead and feed our 60 millimeter screws into these holes. All right, perfect. So go ahead and rotate the plate around and let the plate rest on its front face. Having these screws erect here, we can go ahead and start our dual wheel configuration. So we're going to start with our eccentric side first. Noticing that our marked end is going to face away from our front side. Go ahead and place those. All right, now following the eccentric, we're going to put on our precision shims. And following that, we're going to go ahead and put our wheels on top. All right, then our 9mm aluminum spacer on top followed by our second wheel. Once again, if you find any issues with the precision shim not aligning with your screw, you can rotate it like I just did there, or you can adjust it with your M5 ball driver by simply pushing it through and adjusting it like so. All right, so now that we have our second wheel in place, we're going to go ahead and put a precision shim on top. And following that, our last eccentric with our marked side facing us away from our fixed wheels. And make sure that our upper lip here is facing our inner plate, so it's going to be facing up. All right, perfect. So now that completes our eccentric side. We're going to go ahead and move forward to our fixed wheel side, starting with our 6 millimeter aluminum spacer. Following that, our precision shims. And in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and put our wheel assemblies on top of our precision shim. And then our 9mm aluminum spacer, followed by our wheels. In addition to our dual wheel configuration here, we're going to go ahead and put on top our precision shims. And then following suit will be our 6mm aluminum spacers. All right, perfect. That's looking great, guys. As you can see here, our aluminum side, our aluminum spacer side, which is our fixed side, is completely configured, as well as our centric side. That's looking great. We go ahead and grab our inner plate here, and notice that our four holes on top here are going to align with our four fixed wheels, as well as the eccentric on the bottom. Let's go ahead and stack it like so. Should kind of snap in place with your eccentrics. It's looking good. So let's go ahead and put on our black nylon hex nuts. I'm just going to go ahead and thread them on. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and tilt this to the side, guys. Go ahead and grab your spanner wrench. Let's go ahead and tighten down our, our fixed wheel side first. All right, now moving on to our eccentric side.
Now we have a complete wheel assembly onto our Y-axis right plate here. As you can see, that looks really good, guys. Put that to the side, and let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be mounting our NEMA 23 motor to our Y-axis left plate. So we're gonna need our Y-axis left plate assembly with our wheels attached. We're gonna need four of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, our flexible coupling, four of our 60 millimeter screws, our NEMA 23 motor, our spanner wrench, our M5 ball driver, our spanner wrench, and let's go ahead and get started here, guys. So as you can see on top of this plate here, we have whole spacing configuration for our motor mounting process for lead screw driven. These four screws here are already threaded for our NEMA 23 to mount. So we're going to go ahead and take our NEMA 23 with one of our 60 millimeter screws. We're going to feed it through one end, add our additional 40 millimeter with our 9 millimeter aluminum spacer, and go ahead and fasten that into place. All right, you don't want to over tighten it because we have an additional three screws to uh, put into place. So let's go ahead and work on our opposite corner. All right, and go ahead and screw this one into place. Like I said, don't over tighten it because we want, we want a little space so we can mount the rest of these screws. So let's go ahead and finish up the last two. All right, now that we have all four screws in place, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. So now that that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and take our flexible coupling here. Notice we have two different hole spacings. One's for our lead screw, which is larger than the opposite end for our quarter inch bore on our NEMA 23 motor shaft. So let's go ahead and find our flat spot on our motor shaft, and we're going to place our coupling. We're going to rotate our coupling to our set screw. Let's go ahead and tighten that down to the shaft here. All right, then rotate it around to our additional screw here and tighten that down as well. That looks great, guys. Check that out. It's starting to come together. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this assembly to the side and go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, moving forward to the next step, guys. We are going to be assembling our X carriage. We're going to need our X carriage plate here. As you can see, the three holes on the inside here differ from our opposite plate. The other plate will not have these three additional holes, so make sure that you have the right plate. We're also going to need six of our 27 millimeter screws, three of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, three of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, We're gonna need six of our precision shims, six of our nylon black hex nuts, and six of our already assembled wheels here. In addition to that, our M5 ball driver, spanner wrench, and our permanent marker. So once again, to start off, we're gonna go ahead and mark our eccentric spacers where our six millimeter stamp is in place. Let's go ahead and mark those guys. All right, perfect. Now that we have those in place, we're going to go ahead and grab our X carriage plate here. Now notice we have three recessed holes here that are larger than our other side. These are going to be for our centrics, as the opposite is going to be for our fixed wheels. So we're going to go ahead and feed our 27 millimeter screws through. Perfect. So go ahead and rotate this plate around. Now that we have our screws fixed in place, we can go ahead and stack on our aluminum spacers. Once again, notice that we have a set of holes that are larger than the other. The fixed wheels are gonna have the smaller and our centrics are gonna go into the larger here. So this six millimeter aluminum spacer is gonna go on our left side, followed by our precision shim, and our assembled wheels on top of that. All right, so now that we have our fixed wheel set in place. We're going to move on to our centric side here, making sure that our mark side is facing away from our fixed wheels. All right, and add your additional precision shim, followed by your assembled wheels. Very nice, guys. So let's go ahead and thread our black nylon hex nuts on top. All right, perfect. So go ahead and tilt this to the side, and we are going to fasten it down with our spanner wrench and our M5 ball driver. Now 
That looks great, guys. So we got our X carriage assembly in place. Let's go ahead and put this to the side and move on to our next step. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our X carriage assembly. So we're gonna need our X carriage assembly, our anti-backlash nut block, two of our 25 millimeter screws, two of our nylon hex nuts, two of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our precision shims, and um, our additional parts that are included into our anti-backlash nut block. All right, so to get started here, guys, we're gonna go ahead and notice our two center holes in the plate that are recessed. This is for our anti-backlash nut block. Let's go ahead and feed our 25 millimeter screws through. Go ahead and rotate the plate around. All right, now that we have our plate in place, our screws are fixed. Let's go ahead and add our additional parts, starting with our three millimeter aluminum spacer on top of our screws, followed by our precision shim on each screw. All right, go ahead and grab your anti-backlash nut block. Now notice once again that our hex design here is gonna be facing upward, and that's for our nylon hex nuts that will be fed through and mount inside of our block, which is neat, it's aesthetically pleasing, and good mounting process for this block. So let's go ahead and put our block into place here. I'm gonna go ahead and start threading our nylon hex nuts on top. And our additional grub screw. So go ahead and thread that in place. And this is to relieve any type of backlash that we might have in our system, which this block is set up to prevent that to begin with, so rarely will you have to adjust that. All right, now that we have that in place, we're going to add our additional hex nut here. All right, perfect. So go ahead and flip this around. Like we did with the nut blocks, we're going to pull our anti-backlash nut block forward and begin tightening down. All right, make sure that your anti-backlash nut block is square. That looks great, guys. It's tightened down. Now we're ready for the next step. Go ahead and put this to the side, guys, and we'll move forward. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We're going to be assembling our nut blocks onto our back plate of our X carriage system. So we're gonna need our X back plate here. We're gonna need four of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our precision shims, four of our nylon hex nuts, four of our 25 millimeter screws, and two of our nut blocks here. And of course, our um, M five ball driver. So to get started here, we're going to go ahead and notice our two holes here on each opposite end of the plate. These are for our nut blocks. So this is the front of our plate with the open builds etched onto the end here. We're going to go ahead and feed our 25 millimeter screws through. All right, rotate your plate around and set it on the back end here. That way our screws will not move around. And we're going to go ahead and stack on our three millimeter aluminum spacers. So go ahead and put those on each one of the screws. And following that are precision shims. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and add our nut blocks. Go ahead and thread in your nylon hex nut. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate this around, pulling our nut block back slightly. And go ahead and tighten these down. So let's go ahead and do this process for both of our nut blocks. All right, now that we have those tightened down, let's go ahead and turn back a couple uh, rotations. We want this kind of loose. That way we can seat it into place after our lead screw has been fed through. We don't want any backlash in our system, guys, so make sure you do this. All right, perfect. That looks great. We've got our nut blocks assembled here on our X back plate. So let's go ahead and put it to the side and move on to our next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our wheels to our, our front X plate as well as our back X plate assembly. We're going to need both of our plates, our assembly that we just built with our nut blocks. We're going to need seven of our 60 millimeter screws seven of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, eight of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, six of our eccentric spacers, 14 precision shims, seven of our black nylon hex nuts, and 14 of our assembled wheels. In addition to that, we're gonna need our M5 ball driver, spanner wrench, and our permanent marker. So to get started with this, guys, we're gonna go ahead and mark 
each one of our eccentric spacers. I want to mark the stamped end that says 6 millimeter. This way we can adjust our eccentrics accordingly. So go ahead and do that. Alright, now that we have that finished, all of our centrics are marked, we're going to go ahead and grab our X front plate here. As you can see, we have recessed holes, four on top for our fixed wheels, three on the bottom for our centrics. We're going to go ahead and feed our 60 millimeter screws through each one of these holes. Alright, just like that, so we're going to go ahead and rotate this plate around. Alright, now that our, our screws are in place here, as you can see since they're laying on the table, we can go ahead and start our stacking configuration for our dual wheels. So to start it off, we're going to go ahead and grab one of our eccentrics, place it here on one of our 60 millimeter screws, with the black facing us away from our fixed wheels on top. So we're going to go ahead and continue that on the other two. Alright, and after that, our precision shims. Let's go ahead and put all three of those on your 60 millimeter screws. All right, and following that, our assembled wheels. And now our nine millimeter aluminum spacer, followed by an additional wheel. All right, now another precision shim, followed by our final eccentrics. All right, now that's our eccentric side. That looks great guys, we're going to go ahead and move to our fixed wheels. So starting with our 6mm aluminum spacer, we're going to go ahead and put that on all four screws. Followed by our precision shims. And our assembled wheels next. Alright, and now our 9mm aluminum spacer. Followed by our assembled wheels. All right, very nice. So now we're going to go ahead and finish that off with our precision shims and 6mm aluminum spacer. First our precision shims here. And then our 6mm aluminum spacer. All right, perfect. So that looks great, guys. We're going to go ahead and grab our X back plate assembly. And we're going to go ahead and stack this with our three holes here on the bottom facing our centrics, as well as our four holes here on top facing our fixed wheels. Let's go ahead and lay the plate on top. That's looking really good guys. So let's go ahead and put on our black nylon hex nuts here. I'm going to go ahead and thread them on and then we'll fasten them down later. So go ahead and do that guys. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate this to the side here. To give us access to tightening these screws. We're going to start with our fixed wheels first. Go ahead and grab your M5 ball driver and your spanner wrench and let's go ahead and tighten these down guys. All right, perfect. I'll check that out. Looks great, guys. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this to the side and move on to our next step. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our Z-plate assembly to our X-plate assembly here. So we're going to need both of our plate assemblies. We're also going to need eight of our 20 millimeter screws with eight of our black nylon hex nuts our M5 ball driver and our spanner wrench. So we're gonna go ahead and start this off by noticing our, um, our holes here that are designed in the plate for this uh, mounting configuration. So we've got two on each side and two on the top and bottom. So these holes here are what's gonna lock our Z-axis plate in place. So let's go ahead and lay our plate on top here. And we're going to stand the plate up here to give us ease of access for our screws. Perfect. All right, so go ahead and grab your 20 millimeter screws. We're going to go ahead and feed them through our holes here. We'll start off with two on our, our right side here. We're going to go ahead and grab our nylon hex nuts here, making sure that the plate is square. We're going to thread these on top 
and kind of lock our plate in place so we can finish up the rest of our screws. Alright, so now that we have two of these threaded on, let's go ahead and tighten them down. Go ahead and grab your ball driver and spanner wrench. Now before you tighten them down completely, make sure that your plates are completely aligned and square. So what I mean by that is these plates should look identical when mounted. You should have a flush finish. All sides should be completely flush. Alright, so go ahead and continue tightening down. And also with this plate assembly, we do have access holes here built. As you can see, you can stick your ball driver through these holes here to access your screws on the inside. Alright, so now that we have this tightened down, it's looking good, it's square, it's flush. Let's go ahead and put our additional screws in, guys. Alright, very nice. So let's go ahead and thread our, our black nylon hex nuts onto our screws. Alright, so let's go ahead and tighten this down, guys. Let's go ahead and grab your spanner wrench and your ball driver, and let's get to it. Alright, they're all fastened down now, guys. That's looking great. We've got our, our triple plate assembly, and this thing is looking fantastic. So let's go ahead and put this to the side, and move on to the next step, guys. Alright, on this step, we are going to be assembling our end mounts to our 250mm C-beam with our X-carriage. So we're going to go ahead and get our X-carriage, our 250 C-beam, two of our Z-axis end mounts, and eight of our 15 millimeter screws, our M5 ball driver, and our spanner wrench. All right, so to get started here, we're gonna go ahead and take our 250 rail and place our X carriage assembly onto our 250 rail here. All right, so the wheels should be facing the outer end of the C-beam, and your anti-backlash nut block should be within the track of the C-beam. So go ahead and slide it into place. It should fit nicely, we don't have any preload on our wheels with our Centrix facing outward. So as you can see, it fits on there nicely. From there, we're going to go ahead and grab one of our C-beam end mounts and place it on top of our 250 C-beam here. And let's go ahead and thread one of our 15 millimeter screws in there. You want to make sure that it's square, flush against your 250 C-beam here. And go ahead and fasten that one screw down. Alright, we're going to do the same thing for our additional screws. So go ahead and do that, guys. Alright, perfect. So that's one of our end mounts on top of our 250 C-beam here. So let's go ahead and do the additional side. It's the same process. Align your C-beam end mount to your C-beam. Let's go ahead and thread in one of our 15 millimeter screws. And let's go ahead and thread in the rest of our screws here just to make sure that our plate is square. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and tighten those down, guys. So we have our end mounts attached to our 250 C-beam here. It's looking great, guys. In addition to that, we're going to go ahead and adjust our Centrix on the Z-axis. So let's go ahead and flip it to the other side here with our Centrix facing us. You should see that your permanent marked side is facing you. So we're going to go ahead and adjust these to the right until we get the proper preload on our wheels. Just slow turns, kind of get a feel on the wheel here. It should be touching the rail, but not overloaded. All right, so my front wheel here is perfect. My middle and my last wheel here need to be adjusted a little bit more. 
All right, now it's just my metal wheel that needs to be adjusted a little bit more. All right, that's perfect. The wheels are all on the track. They're not too loose, they're not too tight. It's exactly what we want, guys. So go ahead and put this assembly to the side, and we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our motor to our Z-axis as well as our lead screw. So we're going to go ahead and grab our actuator assembly here for our Z-axis, our uh, 250 millimeter lead screw, our flexible coupling, two of our flange bearings, two of our 8 millimeter shims, two of our 8 millimeter lock collars, four of our 60 millimeter screws, four of our 9 millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, our NEMA 23 motor, and our ball driver set here. Now if you don't have a ball driver set, you can't purchase it on Open Build's online store, which is awesome. This definitely comes in handy. So I would definitely suggest doing that, guys. So let's go ahead and get started here. We are going to start with our motor mount assembly here, facing the top portion of the Z-axis. So let's go ahead and set our assembly like so, with our end mount facing upward, and grab our NEMA 23 motor, one of our 60 millimeter screws here, one of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, 9 millimeter aluminum spacer, and let's go ahead and place the motor on top here with the wires facing towards our back plate here. And let's go ahead and screw one of them down. That way it helps with uh, the mounting process for the additional screws. So let's go ahead and fasten that one down. All right. So now let's go ahead and lay this on its back here and finish up our additional 60 millimeter screws with our spacers for three of these holes. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect, guys. So that looks great. We've got our motor mounted to our Z-axis end plate. We're going to go ahead and take our flexible coupling and attach it to the motor shaft. So we've got a quarter-inch bore here, and we also have our larger bore, which is going to be for our lead screw. So let's go ahead and find the flat end of the motor shaft. Face that upward, and we're going to take the quarter-inch bore, attach it to our motor shaft here. Go ahead and take your ball driver and let's secure that in place as well as the opposite end here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down as well. Alright, now that our motor is mounted and in place here, I'm going to go ahead and lay this system on its back and we're going to feed our lead screw through the z-axis here, adding our additional parts, one of our flanged bearings, 8 millimeter shim and our 8 millimeter lock collar. We're going to continue to feed it through until we find our anti-backlash nut block here. And then go ahead and rotate your screw to the right and feed it through the system completely. And we're going to go ahead and push this back a little bit so we can see the other end. Alright, perfect. It came through the other end. So make sure that these parts are all the way back, flush against this uh, end mount here. And we're going to go ahead and add our additional parts to the top of our lead screw. So starting with our 8mm lock collar. Then our 8mm shim, our flange bearing. Alright, we're just going to continue to rotate this through. I want to make sure that these parts don't move. As you can see, these already went underneath my uh, carriage assembly. You can just take your ball driver and sort them backward. Alright, so now we got this in place here. Just keep rotating the screw through until you reach your flexible coupling here. So now on this opposite end here, we're going to make sure that our flange bearing feeds into our end plate, flush to the plate, perfect. And then our 8mm shim and our lock collar here, we're going to make sure it's completely tight to the end of the plate here, sandwiched together, and we're going to tighten that down. We want to make sure that this is tight, we don't want any backlash in the system or any play in the lead screw. Alright, so that's perfect, so let's move on to our front side here. Now we're going to go ahead and adjust our flexible coupling. We're going to go ahead and tighten that down to our lead screw to make our carriage system mobile. 
tighten down the opposite end here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move this down, and this will give us access to our top flange bearing and lock collar, and we'll tighten that down. So once again, you want to make sure that flange bearing is completely flush against the plate, and we'll go ahead and tighten down our lock collar. All right, perfect. That's looking great, guys. So now we have a complete actuator for our Z-axis, and that is looking awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and put this to the side, guys, and we're going to move on to our next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here, guys. We are going to be working on our x-axis. So we're going to be mounting our y right plate here to our x-axis C-beam, which is at 500 millimeters, as well as our 20 by 40 is at 500 millimeters. In addition to that, we're going to need six of our 15 millimeter screws and our ball driver. So to get started guys, we're going to go ahead and grab our plate. Starting with just our C-beam, we are going to thread a couple of our screws in place and fastening it down. So as you can see, there is a C formation in the plate here, these four holes. We are going to screw in our C-beam like so. Alright, so starting off with this one screw here, we're just going to kind of seat the C-beam correctly. Kind of let the weight take the plate backward. We're going to make sure that the rest of our holes are aligned here. Squareness is very important for this, this x-axis, so we want to make sure that everything is in place. If need be, we will adjust the C-beam as we're tightening down our screws. Alright, so let's go ahead and fasten the rest of these screws in place, guys. Alright, now that we have those in place, we're just going to go ahead and tighten them down. Alright, now let's go ahead and grab our 20 by 40 rail. As you can see, we have two holes here underneath our, our square hole in the plate. We're going to go ahead and run our 20 by 40 in that section there. And we're going to go ahead and feed our 15 millimeter screw through the hole here. It's kind of threaded in place. And the same with the bottom portion here. And let's go ahead and tighten those down as well, guys. Alright, perfect. So as you can see now, we are going to be working on the opposite end of our x-axis next, mounting our additional plate, making sure to put our z-axis on our uh, x-carriage assembly onto the x-axis before we finish it off with our end plate. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. <clears throat> Alright, moving forward to the next step here, guys. We are going to be attaching our additional y-axis plate to our x-axis here. We are going to need our y-axis left plate with our x-carriage assembly, our x-axis assembly that we have done so far. In addition, we're going to need four of our black angle corner connectors, six of our 15 millimeter screws, four of our 12 millimeter screws, four of our 8 millimeter screws, four of our black nylon hex nuts, and four of our M5T nuts and also our M5 ball driver here. So to get started here guys, we're gonna go ahead and slide on our X carriage assembly here. So with the back plate, we are gonna have it facing towards our 20 by 40 rail. So as you slide it on, make sure that you don't have any preload on your wheels, which you shouldn't, should slide on relatively easy. We're gonna place that like so, and add a couple of our M5 T nuts in the track here. So go ahead and add two on the top track here for the C-beam and two on the bottom. And this is going to be for mounting our black angle corner connectors for extra rigidity on this x-axis. Alright, so two more on the bottom here. Alright, so let's go ahead and slide on our y-axis plate here. Go ahead and align it with our x-axis C-beam. We want to make sure that we thread in at least one screw here to hold the assembly together and then we can tighten it down from there. All right, now that you have uh, one of your screws threaded in, let's go ahead and add our additional. I want to make sure that the system's square before we tighten them down completely. So three more of our 15 millimeter screws are going to be attached to our C-beam. And then we will move on to our 20 by 40. All right, now as you can see, I'm at an angle here, but that doesn't matter with the ball driver here. You have this tip, which is flexible for angles. That's why I said, guys, definitely purchase these on the Open Builds Parts Store. They're an excellent tool for building any type of machine. You can work at angles, straight on, definitely a great set of tools. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up our last 15 millimeter screw here on the bottom. 
And like I said, we're not going to tighten them down completely. We want to make sure that our whole X carriage and X axis is completely square. So we're going to go ahead and attach our 20 by 40 rail now. All right, and then one more 15 millimeter screw here at the bottom. All right, now you can get this 20 by 40 tight now. As you can see, our rail is flush against our plate. That's what we want. So let's go ahead and tighten down our C-beam. All right, perfect. That's looking really good, guys. So in addition to this, we have our... 12 millimeter screws, 8 millimeter screws, and our black angle corner connectors. So we're going to go ahead and turn our X axis to face us. And as you can see here, we have our M5 T nuts in place. So there's going to be two per side. So make sure that you have your top and bottom aligned here with the plate. As you can see on the left side here, you're going to have additional holes for your 12 millimeter screws to go through. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side with our M5 T nuts. You can just kind of shift them through with your M5 ball driver. Get them aligned here. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our eight millimeter screws here. Slide it through your black angle corner connector and let's go ahead and attach it to our M5 T-nut here. Make sure that it's flush with our C-beam. Want it to look nice and uniform. That looks really good. So let's go ahead and move on to our bottom M5 T-nut. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing to this other side, guys. All right, beautiful. So our black angle corner connectors are in place. We're going to go ahead and tie them into our plate with our 12 millimeter screws here. So we're just going to go ahead and push our 12 millimeter screws through. Tie it in with our black nylon hex nut here. All right, and we're going to do the same thing to the other side here, guys. So go ahead and do that. All right, that's looking really good, guys. Got our x-axis in place. As you can see, it's starting to come together. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so on this step, guys, we're going to be adjusting our Centrix for our x-axis. So let's go ahead and tilt our machine here kind of catty corner it and as you can see our centrics are going to be on the bottom portion here of our x-axis so once again we're going to adjust all of our centrics in the same direction making sure that there's proper preload on all the wheels go ahead and check the top wheels now kind of get a feel for how much preload we're going to have to put on there i have a couple wheels that are in good shape all the rest are loose so let's go ahead and tighten down our centrics i'm going to be adjusting each eccentric to the right so go ahead and Adjust those eccentrics accordingly guys, making sure that preload is on the wheels. So these are too, too loose. It's touching the rail, but we need a little rigidity here. We want an accurate machine. So let's go ahead, tighten it a little bit more. So now as you can see, my right wheel here is pretty stiff, but it still has mobility. That's what we want. So as you can see this one, you can turn it. We don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and adjust that eccentric. Alright, so let's move on to the next eccentric. Alright, so now our center wheels are also tight and against the rail. Perfect. Our back two. All we need to adjust is our back right eccentric. And once again, guys, it might differ for your machine. So make sure that you adjust all your eccentrics and get a feel for the adjustment, what the wheel is going to feel like on the rail. Because all our machines use these extreme wheels and our eccentric, so it's definitely a good thing to learn. So alright, our wheels are adjusted, and let's go ahead and move on to the next step here, guys. Alright, so on this step, guys, we are going to be assembling our lead screw into our x-axis. We are going to need our, our assembly that we have so far of our x-axis, our lead screw at 500 millimeters, two of our flange bearings, two of our 8mm shims, two of our 8mm lock collars, and our ball driver set here. So to start this off guys, we're going to go ahead and feed our lead screw through our y-axis plate here towards our x-axis. We are going to attach our flange bearing, 8mm shim, and our lock collar. 
Now we're going to thread this through our nut blocks, just rotating the lead screw right. We can twist it through both of our nut blocks, keeping these three parts in place here because these are going to be attached to our Y-axis right plate. You want to make sure that you can align the lead screw with both of the nut blocks. If you can remember before, we loosened our nut blocks for this purpose exactly to make sure that the lead screw will fall into place. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and loosen the screws just a tad. That way we can feed the lead screw through. All right, so keep rotating the lead screw through until you can see it protruding outside of the x-axis carriage assembly. Now we're going to go ahead and put on our additional parts starting with our lock collar, 8 millimeter shim, and our flange bearing facing towards the plate. This will be a flush mount against our y-axis plate on both sides. And then go ahead and continue to rotate your lead screw. Alright, so once you have your lead screw completely adjusted down to the other end here, it should be pushing into your flexible coupling. We're going to go ahead and take our additional parts here at the end of our lead screw. Our flange bearing should be inserted into the plate as a flush mount. Go ahead and grab your ball driver and tighten down your lock collar. You want to make sure that it is tight, sturdy, it's not moving. All right, perfect. So we're going to do the same thing on the opposite ends. So let's go ahead and rotate the machine here. Let's go ahead and tighten down that lock collar. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and move to our flexible coupling here and tighten down our set screw here. And then on the opposite side of the flexible coupling, we're going to tighten down that screw as well. All right, now that we have that assembled, it should look like so. Lead screw running through our x-axis. That's looking really great, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our y-axis. In this step alone, we're just going to need two of our 1,000 millimeter C-beam. We're going to run through our y-axis left and right plates. And then we will start our assembly on the end plates as well as the lead screws. So let's go ahead and take one of our C-beam, making sure that the C-channel here is facing inward towards our nut block, and just slide that into place. And we're going to do the same thing with our opposite C-beam. All right, perfect. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and um, tighten down your nut block behind on the X-axis. Now that we have our X-axis lead screw in place, we're going to go ahead and fasten down our nut block. So go ahead and do that guys and we'll move on to the next step. Alright guys, moving on to the next step here. We're going to be mounting our end plates to both ends of our Y-axis. In this step we're going to need our assembly that we have thus far. We're going to need a 20 by 40 at 495 millimeters. We are going to need 10 of our M5 T-nuts. We're going to need two of our drop-in T-nuts, four 8 millimeter screws, two of our black angle corner connectors, 8 of our 12 millimeter screws, 8 of our 15 millimeter screws, and our two end plates here. Now each one of our end plates are designed for each side of the machine, so the open build should be facing outward. Um, they are adjustable, so if need be you can switch them around, but each set should be designed for each side of the machine. So let's go ahead and take our 20 by 40 rail here and insert some of our T-nuts for our plates. As you can see here, we have four holes on each one of our end plates. Those are going to lock into our T-nuts. So we're going to go ahead and put two T-nuts on top here, two on the bottom, and the same for the other side. All right, in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and slide two of our T-nuts on top in this top rail here, and that's for our black angle corner connectors that are going to mount to our C-beam. So let's go ahead and do that. Now to start this off, we're going to go ahead and place our C-beam on top of our spoiler board configuration. So this spoiler board here is going to be for our increased depth, which is the standard for our lead screw driven work B. As you can see here, if we add an additional rail here, which would be a 20 by 40, we would decrease the depth, which we do for our belt driven work B. So all right, now that we have that in place, let's go ahead and take one of our end plates and thread it into our C-beam. Go ahead and grab a 15 millimeter screw and thread it into place here. 
So once again, we want this end mount to be flush to our C-beam. As you can see here, it's flush. There's no difference in height. That's what we want, guys. So let's go ahead and continue on with our additional 15 millimeter screws into our C-beam. All right, now that we have those in place, let's go ahead and tighten it down with our ball driver. Now moving forward, we are going to be mounting our 20 by 40 rail to the end plate. So two of my T-nuts are moved to the back portion of the plate here. So we're gonna grab our 12 millimeter screw and lock one of them in place. And we'll do the same for the bottom here. All right, making sure that the 20 by 40 rail here is flush with the C-beam and our end plate. That's when we'll tighten it down, that looks good. So let's go ahead and tighten these down. Alright, now let's move on to our second T-nuts here. So if you do have a magnetized uh, screwdriver, this works really well to move and manipulate your T-nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in there, grab that additional T-nut, bring it forward, and then adjust it down with my 12 millimeter screw. Alright, and the same with the bottom here. Alright, once we got that in place, we'll go ahead and tighten that down with our 12 millimeter screw. Alright, that's perfect. Okay, one side done here. Let's go ahead and move on to our left side. Go ahead and move these T-nuts down and adjust these towards the end for our end plate. Alright, so once again, we're going to go ahead and thread in our 15 millimeter screws first. Making sure that the end plate is flush to our C-beam. Alright, so go ahead and thread in the rest of the screws here, guys. And once you have it flush against the C-beam, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Alright, so let's go ahead and adjust our 20 by 40 rail here to sit flush onto our C-beam thousand, as well as to our end plate. So while we're doing this, we're going to go ahead and grab a 12 millimeter screw, our ball driver, and we are going to tighten down one of our T-nuts as we make the adjustment to our thousand millimeter C-beam to our 20 by 40. So go ahead and place the screw into the end plate and we'll kind of pull back as we tighten down to make sure that this seat's flush. As you can see, the 20 by 40 is aligned with the 1000 millimeter C-beam. So let's go ahead and tighten down the rest of our 12 millimeter screws to our end plate. Once again, if you need your magnetized screwdriver, go ahead and adjust those T-nuts accordingly. Alright, perfect. Now that our end plates are in place here, we're going to go ahead and attach our black angle corner connectors. So we'll push our T-nuts through here on the top that we've already pre-placed. Taking a black angle corner connector here and an 8mm screw, I'm going to thread in one of our drop-in T-nuts to the 8mm screw. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to align it with the track and tighten it down. So just like so, make sure it's flush against the plate here and tighten that down. Very nice. And take the 8mm screw and tighten it down to the M5 T-nut here down below. Perfect. That looks great. We're going to repeat the same process for our left side. Alright, perfect. Our end plates are in place here. As you can see, this machine's really coming together. This thing's looking great, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling the back portion, just like we did the front, with our two end plates here, two black angle corner connectors. We're gonna need eight of our 15 millimeter screws, eight of our 12 millimeter screws, four of our eight millimeter screws, ten of our M5 T-nuts, two of our drop-in T-nuts, our 20 by 40 rail at 495 millimeters, our M5 ball driver, and a magnetized screwdriver. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here, guys. Once again, we're going to start off with our 20 by 40 rail by running our T-nuts through. Two on top, two on the bottom, and we'll repeat the same process for our opposite side. All right, and then two on the very top, one on each end. This will be for our black angle corner connectors that will mount to our C-beam. All right, from there, we're going to go ahead and lift our system up and place 
the C-beam on top of our 495 20x40 rail. Go ahead and make sure that it aligns properly. All right, that looks good. All right, so now let's go ahead and take our end plates, starting with our left. We'll go ahead and thread in one of our 15 millimeter screws to our C-beam making sure that it's square against the C-beam. So let's go ahead and tighten that down and let's go ahead and do the additional 15 millimeter screws. All right, that's perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and take the 20 by 40 rail here, adjust our T-nuts to fit the pattern on our end plate here. Go ahead and slide that back underneath and go ahead and grab a 12 millimeter screw. Now let's make sure that the 20 by 40 rail is flush against the plate and the C-beam, like so. And we'll go ahead and lock in one of our end T-nuts here. Alright, so let's go ahead and finish up the additional T-nuts with our 12 millimeter screws here. All right, moving on to our right plate. We have this one fastened down. It looks great, it's square. As you can see on the left side, we have our 20 by 40 rail that is flush against our C-beam and our end mount. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Let's go ahead and adjust the T-nuts here accordingly to our hole pattern and our end plate. All right, now let's go ahead and take the end plate. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and thread in our 15 millimeter screws. Make sure that it's flush against the C-beam before you tighten it down. As you can see here, it's flush, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. And let's do the additional three 15 millimeter screws. All right, now that we have our 15 millimeter screws in place with our C-beam, we're gonna go ahead and grab a 12 millimeter screw and make sure that our 20 by 40 rail is flush against the C-beam and end plate. And we're gonna tighten that down to our T-nut. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and finish up our additional three holes here. All right, now we have our end plates in place here. It's looking really good, guys. We're gonna go ahead and finish it up with our black angle corner connectors here. So let's go ahead and push our T-nuts through. We're gonna thread our eight millimeter screw through the black angle corner connector and thread our drop-in T-nut to our eight millimeter screw here. All right, now let's go ahead and place this in the track of the C-beam and go ahead and fasten that down. Grab another one of your eight millimeter screws and we'll tighten down our M5 T-nut underneath. And that looks great. It's flush to our end mount here. It's holding our system in place. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the opposite side here. All right, now we have our frame assembly together here, guys. It's looking really great. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving forward here, guys. On this step, we are going to be assembling our motors to our Y-axis plates. So as you can see here, on each one of our end plates, we have four holes for our motor mount. Each one of these holes is threaded, so it makes for an easy mount. In this step, we're gonna need two of our NEMA 23s. Also, we're gonna need eight of our nine millimeter aluminum space spacers, eight of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our flexible couplings, eight of our 60 millimeter screws, and our ball driver set. So to get started here guys, we're just going to grab one of our NEMA 23 motors, one of our 60 millimeter screws here, and go ahead and add your additional 40 millimeter aluminum spacer and your 9 millimeter aluminum spacer, your M5 ball driver. And we're going to go ahead and mount one of these screws into our end plate here to keep it nice and secure while we adjust the others. So let's go ahead and do that now. Don't tighten it down all the way because we need room to get our other screws and spacers in place. So once again, 60 millimeter screw here add your 40 millimeter aluminum spacer and your additional 9 millimeter aluminum spacer and let's go ahead and screw this one into place onto our end plate all right that looks great so let's go ahead and finish up the bottom two All right, now that we have all our screws in place here, we're gonna go ahead and tighten them down, making sure they're secure against our end mount here. 
All right, very nice. So let's go ahead and take our motor shaft here, move it to the flat side, and take your flexible coupling here. Remember that our quarter inch bore is what's going to be attached to our motor shaft. And let's screw down the set screw to our motor shaft here. Go ahead and turn it around and we'll make the adjustment to our additional screw here. All right, so let's go ahead and repeat the process for our additional motor on our right side here. All right, perfect guys. So now we have both of our motors mounted. It's looking really sharp. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our lead screws into our Y axis on both sides. So as you can see here, we're going to need two of our thousand millimeter lead screws, four of our flange bearings, four of our eight millimeter lock collars, four of our eight millimeter shims, and our ball driver set. So to get started here, we're going to go ahead and take one of our thousand millimeter leads, feed it through the back end here, add our additional parts, starting with the flange bearing, then our eight millimeter shim, and our eight millimeter lock collar here. Going to place those onto our lead as we feed it through. So rotating to the right, we're going to feed it through our nut blocks, making sure that these parts stay behind here. They're going to lock into place to our end plates. All right, now that you see that it's protruding out, we're going to go ahead and add our additional parts, starting with our lock collar here, our 8 millimeter shim, and then our flange bearing. All right, now let's go ahead and finish feeding our lead screw all the way down to our flexible coupling. All right, now the lead screw is fed all the way through to our flexible coupling here. We're going to go ahead and move these parts into place. The flange bearing should lock into place to our end plate here. Rotate your lock collar to where your set screw is showing, and we're going to tighten that down. So now that we have that side complete, we are going to move on to our additional left side and then we will rotate our machine around and lock in the additional parts and our flexible coupling as well. So let's go ahead and move on to the next side. So once again, go ahead and feed the lead screw through, grab your flange bearing, 8mm shim, and your lock collar. Go ahead and slide those into place here and then we're going to feed our lead into our nut blocks once again. Keeping these parts down here. Alright, so go ahead and keep rotating the lead screw here until you see it protruding out of the other end here, like so. Let's go ahead and grab our additional parts, starting with our lock collar, then our 8mm shim, and our flange bearing. Alright, now let's go ahead and feed the lead screw all the way down. All right, perfect. So now that the lead screw is all the way down, we are going to set our flange bearing in place, tighten down our lock collar here. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate our machine around. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lock in our flange bearing once again on this side, and let's tighten down our lock collar. All right, and the opposite side here. Make sure it's nice and tight. All right, so let's move on to the flexible coupling here. Go ahead and tighten down the set screw, as well as our screw on the other side. We'll do the same on this side as well. And then the opposite screw. All right, so now we have our lead screws ran through our Y axis on both sides. We're gonna go ahead and fasten down our nut blocks on each one of our Y axis plates. So let's go ahead and do that now. Remember we left them loose so we could let the lead screw set the position for our Y axis on both sides. So now we can fasten those into place and know that our position is secure. Let's go ahead and do the same on the other side here. 
All right, perfect guys. So we are finished with that step and one step closer to finishing this machine guys. It's looking great. Let's move on to the next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here guys, we are going to be assembling our spoiler board configuration. So right here in our table, we're gonna have two of our 20 by 40 rails running through for our support beams, followed by our double L brackets, which are gonna be mounted to our actual base frame here. So in this step, we're gonna need two of our 20 by 40 rails. We're gonna need 32 of our eight millimeter screws, 38 of our M5 T-nuts, eight of our double L brackets, our M5 ball driver, our magnetized screwdriver, permanent marker, and our measuring tape. So each of our 20 by 40 rails here are gonna measure at 960 millimeters. To start this off, we're gonna go ahead and feed our T-nuts through. Now we're going to feed T-nuts in for our spoiler board configuration as well as the mounting process for our spoiler board. So to start it off we're going to go ahead and feed two of our M5 T-nuts on our top track of our 20 by 40 rail here. That will be for our single L brackets which we'll get to that in our later step for mounting our spoiler board. Alright so we have two T-nuts in the top track here. We're going to put two T-nuts in towards the end of the 20 by 40 rail and this is to mount to our base frame. So go ahead and rotate your 20 by 40 rail here. Now we're going to add one T-nut in the top slot here for our additional single L bracket which will be for mounting the spoiler board once again. And then our two T-nuts here at the end will be for mounting to our base frame. So go ahead and put this one to the side. All right, now for our second piece, similar to our last. Once again, this top slot here, we're gonna feed two of our M5 T-nuts. Two on the end here, mounting to our frame. Go ahead and rotate. One on top here, and two on the end. All right, so now that we have our T-nuts on this side, we're gonna go ahead and rotate our rail around, and we are gonna put two of our M5 T-nuts on the end. Once again, flip it over, two more of our T-nuts. Go ahead and set this one to the side. And for our additional rail, once again, two M5 T-nuts here at the end. Rotate, and two more of our M5 T-nuts. All right, perfect. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and mount our double L brackets onto the ends of our 20 by 40 rail. It makes for an easier process when mounting these center beams into our table of our work bee. So let's go ahead and grab one of our double L brackets. Notice the hole spacing differs. We want the hole spacing that's closest to this corner bracket here versus this is uh, spacing that's further away. So this is gonna mount to our 20 by 40 rail, the holes that are spaced closer to the corner here. So let's go ahead and put that into place, making sure that this is flush against our 20 by 40 rail. Go ahead and grab an eight millimeter screw, ball driver, and let's go ahead and place this. Now we're going to follow the same process on all sides of the rail. So we're going to have a double L bracket on each side so we can mount it to our frame. So let's go ahead and finish up this process guys and we'll get to mounting our 20 by 40 rail to our frame. All right, now that we have those finished, we have our double brackets on each end of our 20 by 40. We're gonna go ahead and put those to the side. All right, now that we have all of our double brackets attached to our 20 by 40 rails on both sides for two rails, we're gonna go ahead and put those to the side and we are going to move on to our additional steps here to attach our base beams to our base frame here. So on the inside tracks, we are going to place our M5 T-nuts. We're gonna have a total of eight, so four on top, four on bottom. So go ahead and grab one of your M5 T-nuts here. And as you can see our tracks are still open here. We have not put on our end caps yet for this specific purpose. So let's go ahead and slide in our T-nuts. So like I said, four on top, four on bottom. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and check these T-nuts, make sure that we have four on each side. We do. So go ahead and slide two of your T-nuts down to your left side. It's going to be for one of our brackets. And the same for the bottom slot. And the reason we're doing this is it just helps out with uh, the process. Once we get our uh, base frame in place, we don't want to have to fish out our T-nuts. So we're going to go ahead and place them like so, and then space them appropriately. 
So now we're going to go ahead and grab our measuring tape and we're going to measure from the inside of our C-beam here to our rail at 90 millimeters. So if you go ahead and grab your permanent marker, we'll go ahead and mark that off so we can have the appropriate placement. And just the spec will work, we don't have to mark it completely. And the same on the opposite end here. Alright, so moving forward, we're going to go ahead and take our 20 by 40 rail here, making sure that our two T-nuts here are going to be facing towards the left side of the machine, and then our center T-nut here on the top uh, track is facing the right side of the machine. Alright, so as you can see here, we're going to slide this into place, aligning it with our 90 millimeter mark here. So this left corner of our 20 by 40 rail should be aligned with the mark, so go ahead and shift it if need be. All right, perfect. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and mount it to our T-nuts that are on the inside track here. So go ahead and grab your uh, magnetized screwdriver, and we will shift the T-nuts accordingly. All right, now that they're in place, go ahead and grab your 8mm screws, and go ahead and screw in all of the four sections here, and let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and continue that to our second rail on this side. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. Once again, before we get started, just double check your T-nuts. Make sure that the top two are facing to the right of the machine. The single on the other side is facing towards the left side of the machine. So let's go ahead and place that into the machine like so. Make sure that your right corner here is aligned with your mark. And let's go ahead and adjust our T-nuts and screw in our 8mm screws. All right, perfect. So this is looking great, guys. We got our 20 by 40s mounted to the back side of our machine here. So we're going to go ahead and rotate our machine and continue the same process on the opposite side. So once again, we're going to go ahead and take our measurements and mark at 90 millimeters. Let's go ahead and grab our permanent marker here and make that mark. Same for the opposite side here. All right. So let's go ahead and grab our additional T-nuts here, four on top, four on bottom. Go ahead and slide those in place. All right, now that we have those in place, we're going to have to make some adjustments with our T-nuts. So make sure that two are on the bottom here on the left side. Go ahead and shift those over. And then two on the top rail here. Shift those down for our other 20 by 40 rail here on the left side. Alright, perfect. So we're going to work on one rail at a time here. So make sure that it's aligned with our point of reference and grab one of your 8mm screws here and let's lock in one of these T-nuts here. Alright, perfect. So now we're going to follow suit with our additional T-nuts, make sure that they're aligned and then we're going to fasten them in with our 8mm screws. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, now that we have those in place, guys, as you can see now, we have a rigid frame. These 20 by 40s are extremely sturdy. It's going to be perfect for mounting our spoiler board. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be setting up our single L brackets inside our table here for our spoiler board. So we're going to have three on each side of the machine, as well as two on this 20 by 40 rail with an additional one on the inside, as well as two on the opposite end and one more riding in the middle. So let's go ahead and look over the parts that we're going to need for this. We're going to need 12 of our single L brackets. We're going to need 12 of our self-tapping screws, 12 of our 8 millimeter screws, and 6 of our drop-in T-nuts. So to get started here guys, we're going to go ahead and grab our measuring tape here and measure out some distances. So first off, we're going to go foot out from the inside to our 20 by 40 rail. So from our base frame out, we're going to go ahead and mark that at a foot. So go ahead and do that on both sides. So we're going to the right side now. So once again, add a foot, and then we're going to spin the machine around and do the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead and measure that at a foot. All right, and the additional side. All right, and now for the middle, we are going to take half the distance from the base frame. 
So at 480 millimeters is where we are going to put our additional dots here in the middle of the 20 by 40 rails. So go ahead and measure that to 480 millimeters and make your mark on each side. And let's go ahead and get started on mounting our single L brackets here. All right, so let's go ahead and take one of our single L brackets with one of our eight millimeter screws and one of our drop-in T-nuts. Go ahead and thread the drop-in T-nut on the single L bracket here. And we are going to place one of them right here in the middle on the back side of the machine. And then we're gonna have two more, so on the outsides as well. So from here, we're just gonna take a, take a look at the center and mount our L bracket. You can always adjust these around with the drop-in T-nuts. All you have to do is loosen it and you can shift it around. Make sure that your single L bracket is flush, if it turns on you, all you have to do is adjust it with your ball driver here. You just tilt it either way, you want to make sure it's flush, that way it mounts to our spoiler board flush. Alright, so let's go ahead and do our two more single L brackets, we'll work on the left side first. And once again, pay attention to the spacing. The closest spacing to our corner here is going to be mounted to our 20 by 40 rail. So eight millimeter screw, drop in T-nut here, go ahead and thread it, and let's mount it on our left side. All right, perfect, that's really looking good. So let's go ahead and do our right side. All right, perfect. So those are flush against my 20 by 40 rail here. If you need to make some adjustments, go ahead and do so. Want to make sure that they are flush on this 20 by 40 rail for a smooth mounting process. So we're going to move towards our left side of our 20 by 40 rail here running in the center. So once again, that was already measured out. We marked it. Let's go ahead and grab one of our single L brackets, one of our eight millimeter screws. Move your T-nut accordingly. So you're just going to shift that down. All right, make sure that locks into place and it's aligned with your point of reference here. Tighten it down and make sure that it's flush on your 20 by 40 rail. All right, that looks great. So let's go ahead and continue on to our, our right 20 by 40 rail here. So once again, we're going to go ahead and grab a single L bracket and an 8 millimeter screw and let's go ahead and fasten that into place. All right, that looks great. We're going to go ahead and move on to our center pieces here. So go ahead and grab another L bracket and an 8 millimeter screw. All right, so we got that one locked in place. Now we're going to do the same thing to our additional one in the middle here. So another L bracket and an 8 millimeter screw. All right, now that we have this one fastened, just once again, you want to make sure that they're flush against the 20 by 40. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and rotate the machine around, and we'll do the same thing to our opposite end of our machine. Once again, we're going to start off with our drop-in T-nuts and our single L brackets on the front face of our front beam here. So go ahead and grab a single L bracket and a drop-in T-nut, and go ahead and thread that. And place it towards the middle here of your 220 by 40s. If you need to adjust it, you can always loosen it and reposition your single L bracket. All right, that looks great. So let's go ahead and continue this process the same as we did the other side. The only difference is we will not be doing the center, just our two opposite ends here measured out at a foot each, and then our left and right single L brackets. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect guys. Now we have our single L brackets in place. Everything is measured out to a T. This is looking really great. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our next step. All right guys, in this next step here, we are going to be adjusting our centrics for our Y axis plates here. Now that we have our frame in place and our assembly pretty much complete mechanically, we can adjust our machine accordingly and really get access to our centrics at the bottom of each of our Y axis plates. So let's go ahead and adjust it to where we have a bit of an overhang here. As you can see, the centrics are going to be on the bottom of the plates. So we're going to go ahead and make room for that so we can adjust them accordingly. So let's go ahead and rotate each eccentric in the same direction. So we're going to go to the right here. Make sure to check the wheels for preload. So my two front wheels are in place. Now every machine's gonna vary, guys, so make sure that you check each individual wheel. You don't want a loose gantry system, so I want to make sure that everything is snug. So this side for our left uh, Y axis plate here, this is completely adjusted. So let's go ahead and rotate our machine around to the other side and we will adjust our additional eccentrics. With just a little bit of overhang here, we can access our eccentrics. So let's go ahead and adjust those just like we did the last. 
All right, perfect. So we got all our centrics adjusted. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving forward here, guys. On this step, we are going to be assembling our end caps to each one of our base frame 20 by 40s. So it'll be a total of eight of our self-tapping screws and four of our end plates with uh, our power drill here. We're going to go ahead and seat those into place. So taking uh, your self-tapping screw here, grab our end cap and fasten it into place. Starting with the top here, we're going to go ahead and drill this in place. Make sure you're holding on to the machine and go ahead and screw that in. All right, now for the bottom. So that end cap is in place. It's flush against our 20 by 40. Looks nice and uniform. That's really looking sharp, guys. Let's go ahead and finish up the additional and we'll move on to our next step. All right, now we have our end caps in place. This machine is looking great, guys. Let's go ahead and rotate it around here to get it in place for our next step. All right, it's looking great, guys. Let's move on to the next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our router spindle mount to our Z-axis here. So we're gonna need our router spindle mount, our four black angle corner connectors, eight of our eight millimeter screws, and four of our drop in T-nuts. So let's go ahead and start off by assembling the black angle corner connectors to our router spindle. It really helps with this process. That way you can get a good angle with your ball driver when mounting it to your Z-axis. So go ahead and grab your 8mm screw and fasten your black angle corner connector into place. Alright, now that we have two on the top fixed and in place, we're going to go ahead and rotate it and do the opposite end here. Let's go ahead and place your black angle corner connectors on top of the router. Let's go ahead and mount these real quick. Alright, make sure they're nice and snug. And let's do this last black angle corner connector here. Very nice, that looks great. So let's go ahead and add an additional eight millimeter screw with our drop-in T-nut. We're gonna thread the drop-in T-nut to our eight millimeter screw. All right, so we're gonna thread our second one in place here. Go ahead and rotate the router spindle. Let's go ahead and thread these eight millimeter screws. That looks great guys, let's go ahead and bring it to our Z-axis here. Starting with the top first, we'll rotate this to where our drop-in T-nuts fit into place. And now we can work towards the bottom. So we'll bring this up about two inches. And like I said, it's always adjustable. So depending on what you're using, you can make that adjustment accordingly. All right, so we're gonna fasten these down. Make sure they're nice and tight. You don't want any movement. And the same for the bottom here. Go ahead and fasten those into place. Get them nice and snug. That looks awesome, guys. This work bee is coming together. All we have to do now is our spoiler board and the mechanical portion of this machine is complete. So let's go ahead and move on to that step. All right, guys, so on this step, we're gonna rotate our machine 180 degrees. And the reason for doing so is we are going to be adjusting our lead screws and this gantry system we're going to move back to completely touch our 20 by 40 rail and we want to make sure that the machine is not cockeyed so we're going to go ahead and do that now so if you grab your flexible couplings here you can rotate your gantry all the way back so let's go ahead and do that now okay guys just a quick note here before we start to uh, turn our flexible couplings here on our lead screw make sure that none of your wires are touching here on your uh, stepper motor if they are touching, it will create resistance and it'll be extremely hard to turn the lead screw. So make sure to separate those guys. All right, guys, as we're approaching the 20 by 40 rail here, make sure that both ends touch the 20 by 40 rail here simultaneously. So now that this one is touching, let's make sure that our other plate is touching as well, which it is. That's perfect, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, guys, so now that we have our gantry system all the way back, we're not cockeyed, we're going to go ahead and... Rotate our machine 180 degrees. The reason for doing so is the weight is on the back of the machine. So we can do an overhang on the table here. So we can get underneath for our spoiler board. So let's go ahead and move on to the spoiler board mounting process. Okay guys, so on this step we're going to go ahead and grab our spoiler board. And we're going to slide it into our table here. And start the mounting process. Alright, so on this step guys, we're going to go ahead and mount our spoiler board. 
As you can see here, we have it centered. So if you don't have it centered, go ahead and center your spoiler board. In this step, we're also going to need 12 of our self-tapping screws, our power drill, and we're going to start with our first three single L brackets here underneath the machine. I'm going to start here on the right side of the machine with this first L bracket. Pinching down on the spoiler board, I'm going to drill in with my self-tapping screw, locking that into place just like that. Now let's go on to the next one guys. Same process, pinch down on your spoiler board. Start off slow, let the screw do the work. Just like that. All right, let's move on to our additional L brackets. All right, so now that we have our three self-tapping screws in place on our L brackets, we are going to pull our machine out a little bit further in order to access our center brackets. The reason we can do this is because all of our weight is in the back of the machine. So let's go ahead and do that now. As you can see, underneath the machine, we can't access four of our L bracket. Once again, holding on to the spoiler board. Now let's go on to the middle. All right, and let's move on to the next side. All right, so moving forward, guys, we're gonna go ahead and rotate our machine 180 degrees. All right, and pull this back out a little bit more so we can access our additional L brackets. All right, guys, so we're gonna go underneath the machine now and screw in these additional L brackets here. Three to be exact. We're gonna start on our right side of the machine first, following the same steps, holding down the spoiler and slowly screwing in. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and rotate our machine 90 degrees so we can access our 1L bracket on this left side. Let it overhang a little bit here. And let's go ahead and secure this side. All right, and let's go ahead and move on to the next side. Okay, so let's go ahead and rotate the machine 180 degrees. So once again, we're gonna overhang the machine slightly, and that'll give us access to our last bracket. All right, and that completes the mounting process for the spoiler board, guys. Good job.